Hello everyone, how you doing? And you're very welcome to this week's for last word on Formula One with myself, Aidan Raffrey. And of course, as always, we have the la the, the best man in, in Ireland with regards to Formula One, and that is Michael O'Grady, or otherwise known as Zoom user. Hello, Zoom user, how are you? Hello, Zoom user number two. I <laughs> changed that, I know. You were giving out to me last week. And I, I was too lazy. I was just saying it in jest. I was just saying it in I've been lazy, I have. I've been lazy, I know that. You know. There's always something to do, isn't there? <laughs> there you go, know, you know. And uh, so this week we're looking back on the Azerbaijan Grand Prix and we're going to be looking ahead to the Miami Grand Prix. But we'll uh, we'll start, we'll kick off as we always do by looking back at uh, last weekend's race. Can you tell us, uh, tell us your thoughts, um, I suppose, the times, the, the qualifying times and I suppose where everyone finished and maybe, you know, I, I suppose how... Uh, how a bit of banter in between. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you you know I suppose the um the tire changing and all those kind of things and uh, you what? know good old safety car that we love to see. No. Oh no, we uh, yeah. Well, well, as we know, with Azerbaijan, it was it's an interesting race. You kind of have to gloss over part of it, or we'll be here all day. Because uh, of course, the twenty eighth we had qualifying, and the twenty ninth we had the sprint shootout. Yes, the sprint shootout, not just sprint qualifying. A no. sprint shootout. And then you heard, the you heard the first here on Ross of him. I tell it, yeah. And then after that, we had sprints. <laughs> yeah, there then, you go. There we had the race. I can tell you, I was nearly bleary eyed looking at it now, to be quite honest with you. You don't get that on Sky Sports. You don't, you don't get that in Sky Sports. I tell you, you get no one bleary eyed in Sky Sports. That's half the problem. But <laughs> um, as it panned out, and we try and do the, the first three very quickly, um, qualifying. Charles Leclerc and the Ferrari, what a drive the guy was absolutely driving out of his socks, I have to admit. Very, very tight. Max Verstappen all over him. And what happened? Number one, Charles Leclerc. He did a great job to claim the pole position on that. It is something that I've noticed about the Ferraris this year. And that Charles Leclerc, one or two laps, absolutely chain lightning. No one's going to catch him. The problem is with the Ferraris that on a race... They're not as quick. I don't know why that is. It was normally the opposite way around with Ferrari. I I, I think that was mainly a Michael Schumacher thing. He liked to be faster in the race, and he wasn't qualifying. And and maybe that's the way it's gone now. And um, you know, you know, we'll wait and see, as they say. But you know, the first sprint shootout, then of course, who won that one? Only Charles Leclerc. So you know, you think you're on a run here. Ferrari got qualifying. Ferrari got sprint shootout. How are we going to go after that? Well, unfortunately, Leclerc didn't win um, sprint. It was Sergio Perez who actually uh, bet Leclerc to the thing with Verstappen uh, uh, as well. It was just, it was a bit action packed, I have to admit, but I, I still find it sometimes very hard to get overly enthusiastic about the sprint races. They're great, but, you know, the start, you make a cup of tea, you come back, it's finished. Uh, you know, so it was an interesting situation. Uh, and George Russell came forward and Carlos Sainz came fifth. Fernando Alonso didn't do as well as everybody thought he was going to do. But, as we all know in Formula One, and with everything, you know, the dress rehearsal's great and all that, it's the race on the day is the one that's the big key. And it was... Well, it was a good race, though, to say the least. But it did have a couple of minor issues in it. Most of it, as usual, I'm finding with a lot of the Formula 1s these days, Ed, and I, I, I don't know if you find it yourself, most of the action happens in the first third of the race. Yeah. And, and literally after that, you're not going to miss much. <laughs> you know, yeah, so you could go off and make it, you could go off and do it, put on the dinner and, and you wouldn't miss much. Absolutely. It feels like everyone's going hammer and tongs to get past everyone. And when that's done, then you're going to get very little. You know, it, it really is the first batch of laps. But we, we, we had the race to start anyhow. Perez on pole, Leclerc on second, Verstappen on third. We had 18 on the track and two starting from the pits. And, you know, it, it is a very narrow track. As we said, it's kind of a square and a circle kind of match together, almost like a funny looking saw or something like that, like, you know. Yeah. And, it really, I mean, not an awful lot happened at the start, other than Fernando Alonso, who was <laughs> very eager to pass Lewis Hamilton. That that's that's that was unusual for Fernando Alonso, you know, himself and and, and Lewis get on very well, and, uh, and and absolutely nothing happens, you know. They're they're, they're great great people, but um, I have to, I I was watching. 
the Ferrari very closely on the opening laps because, of course, with the opening laps, there is no DRS. So right. I wanted to see how Charles Leclerc was going to fare out without DRS. And I have to admit, the Ferrari was absolutely fantastic. Red Bull, Max Verstappen could not get by him. He was flying down. Very, very, very difficult to get past. Not that like Ferrari. Max. <laughs> yeah, well, that's very true, you know. And Max did get stuck behind him for a while, but once the DRS opened up, the Red Bull just sailed on by. You know, we, we, it, it, they have it down to a fine art at this stage. It's not only; it's probably one of the fastest cars on the track. It's not the fastest car, but the second this team has DRS, it, it's just gone like a bullet. I I don't know how to manage it. I really don't. Uh, they seem to just go quicker. Than anybody else, and it's it's mince meat in no time at all. I I think Charles Leclerc kind of fancied second place, um, but I think you know on the day a podium would suit him, <laughs> considering he hasn't finished uh, the first three races. He didn't finish two of them, as to say. Um, but you know, it was not, not it finishing was. those, not finishing those first two. Might go against them later on in the season, though, will they? Or it depends on how it's on for the remainder of the season, I suppose, but. Like depending yeah. on how he gets on, it could be the difference between uh we say finishing higher up the higher up the chain or, or not. Absolutely. Absolutely. That that's that's the problem with Formula One. Just one place and at the end of the year you've lost a play you know, you, you could have done better with an extra point. It really must be infuriating for drivers now, I have to admit. Uh when that sort of thing comes along, you know. Um <laughs> I'm sure everything is infuriating for drivers these days, you know. Um, actually, on the start, one thing that did stick out in my mind, did stick out in my mind was Kevin Magnussen and Valtteri Bottas in the Alfa Romeo. I, I've been watching the Alphas carefully because this is kind of their last year as just playing vanilla Alfa Romeo before they're taking over. I and what's their vanilla ice? Well, yeah, <laughs> whatever, what has ice <laughs> or vanilla Valtteri? What do you mean? <laughs> Actually, Valtteri is quite catchy, and uh, they've been just having a miserable time of it. And you know, I was watching carefully to see how to go because Valtteri Bottas is a good driver, and for some reason, the last few races he's been literally pretty much winning the last three or four drivers. And you know, to see Kevin Magnussen hit him. Not once, but twice <laughs> on mm. on the same corner. Like it's kind of oh, it really, it really was bad. I I felt very bad for him. I have to admit, you know. But mm. as I was saying, the thing with the DRS was, of course, lap three DRS came in. Charles Leclerc absolutely blasted by. I have to admit, um, the Ferrari like it wasn't there. It, it couldn't compete anyway. I have to admit, it was just. The, the Red Bull was so quick and of course he needed to get by because his teammate was on pole position Max is a nice guy Max loves the team Max loves his teammate he eats a horse of a different colour when you're on a track yeah. <laughs> it's like two best mates playing on different hurling teams do you know what I mean yeah. best mates great friends the second you put them out there yeah everything changes to say you know so I mean I have to I have to admit I, I was a bit worried about the race becoming boring at mm -hmm. that stage because you know, it's like the days when Mercedes were leading. It was kind of, yeah, we know who's going to be first and second. Who's going to be third? And it was starting to get that way. It's no fault no fault of Red Bull, I suppose. It's, it's more of a fault of the other manufacturers. I'm sure they won't like anyone saying that. But, you know, it's up to them to provide a car. It's up to them to catch them. It's up to them to be as good as them. You know, it's not Red Bull. They're not cheating. They worked their way to where they were. So it kind of is... Up to everybody else, really. Um, I was watching Fernando Alonso carefully as well. Uh, Fernando slowly but surely is my favorite driver at the minute because <laughs> there was just a, just a, a great situation going on. Lap seven. I mean, I was laughing so much. Um, his teammate was having a bit of problems uh, behind him. He had he had over or had to stand on the brake several times, you know. And he actually, you know, came up and he was, you know, talking to the guys and. He was turning around and he was saying, you know, oh, I'm tell 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 Lance he can use my braking system. It's working very well with the car at the moment. In a nice way. Do mm -hmm. you know, he was kind of I, I have to admit the sheer capacity of Fernando Alonso to be able to drive these things around like a bat out of hell. 
Um, he was trying to get past them all over the back of uh, Hamilton, who couldn't drop him for love nor money. And, um, and and at the same time, he's telling the team to tell his teammate to go on to his settings for breaks. They're actually working a little bit better. You know, it really takes a special person to be able to do that, doesn't it? You know what Fair I mean? It's, yeah, yeah, it's just absolutely <laughs> incredible. You know, he's. He's just he's just so much better this year. He really is. And I mean, he was even spotting the fact, you know, he was he was talking and he was t- giving tips on his teammate like a big brother. And then he was saying as well, yeah, you know, Stroll is coming up behind him. And then Stroll says to the team, you know, look, I, I won't and I won't um, attack Fernando because he's on the back of Hamilton. Yeah. And then Fernando comes. They tell this to, Ham- to uh, uh, Alonso. The first thing he says is, "Oh well, look, he can, he can, he can attack if he wants to, you know." But uh, from where I'm sitting, uh, the Mercedes tires are graining quite heavily, so shouldn't be much of a problem in a few laps. And two laps later, of course, who pulls into the pit stop? Oh, Neil Lewis Hamilton, which was the most, the worst thing that could possibly happen. Um, he's going on tires for the rest of the race. You would say to yourself, you know, and yeah. and that's okay. The problem was, yeah, there was a little bit of a, a little bit of an accident on the track. There was a lot of people hit um, a couple of the barriers along the way. An awful lot of cars grazed them. Actually, I'd say the amount of cars that didn't graze them, you could put in the back of a postage stamp. Even even Max Verstappen grazed it a couple of times. And, of course, one car decided, no, that's not going to happen. I'm going to put myself right in there and... I'm not going to. I'm not going to come out. And that was Nick De Vries, and yeah. that was that was lap eleven. And of course, you know, Fernando Alonso hadn't pitted. Thank God for small mercies, I suppose. Hamilton had pitted. Max Verstappen had pitted, and other people had. But the people who didn't pit suddenly, you know, lost nine seconds in the pit lane, and and people were finding themselves way back from where they were. Happy for you know Charles Leclerc, Sergio Perez, people like that, all very very happy with themselves, but. Yeah, the safety car, it was a bit of a disaster, I have to admit. And to be honest, I thought Red Bull made a bit of a hash of it because, you know, Max was going to pit. They called the pit, but then they saw what happened to Nick DeFries and they didn't cancel the pit. You know, they didn't cancel it. So he came in and pitted, came back out, and then the safety car was called. I thought it was a very bad call. It's not something you... I suppose it's not something you hear too often in Red Bull is it a bad call it's been more kind of Ferrari's domain for the last two years yeah. things <laughs> been to be changing, I suppose. yeah but I mean it changed everything around you know George Russell he started in 11th uh, suddenly he was 6th you know because he didn't pit you know he was way up there you know and, and Lewis was dropping back like a stone uh, Max thankfully only went back to third so he wasn't so bad I'm, I'm sure and I mean you know, on the restart, it didn't take him long to get back into it again. You know, yeah. it didn't take long to get past Charles Leclerc. But um, it, it just was interesting because everybody pulled out in hard tyres then. So he was kind of a race with everybody on the same thing. It was interesting to see what was going on and what was happening and uh, and all this sort of crap. Now, the restart, I have to admit, Charles Leclerc did a great job in the Ferrari on the restart. He was all over the back of Perez. But it, it didn't last very long, you know, once the tyres heated up. And then, of course, Max, he did a great job of blocking Max, but Max went by him. Actually, it was a bit of a, a rumour about Charles Leclerc we'll talk about at the end. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's just the way it was. The, the, the Red Bulls were just gone. It, it was a warm-up to see who was going to come forward, which was, was a bit of a pity because it is such a narrow track. Um, and, and the cars do kind of hurt around those cars. It, it's a great spectacle if you're there. Yeah, um, the television is a bit kind of, yeah, okay. Oh, I'd like to see a few people, you know, doing a little bit better, as to say. But you know, that's the way it was, I suppose. You know, but Fernando Alonso was just making me laugh. I have to admit, with his little comments, like a big brother back the whole time. I think he was more entertainment than anybody else. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Know, he really was more entertainment than anybody else on the track at the time. You know, and. I mean, Ferrari, it was good with them in a way because they were talking about the tyres quite a lot to the drivers. Mm. And, uh, you know, a couple of times Sainz was told, you know, yeah, you can push that a little bit harder now. That seems to be OK, because as we know, Ferrari have had a bit of trouble yeah. on their tyres. Well, I suppose but, with regards to the tyres, the though, as well, with Azerbaijan being such a hot country, and um, mm-hmm. you, you outlined, the, I think, the weather there last week. Yeah, you know, because it's so hot, maybe the mm. the rubber would the, the you know the the material that the 
that the tires are made from would kind of melt easier and so would that that would lead to a bit kind of better grip on the track would it well you would say that but of course that's the reason why they have different compounds of soft tires different yeah. compounds of medium tires i i think people get very head up with the what compound are they bringing this week? Um, yeah. They're actually bringing it to try and keep the car out there as long as it can and do X, Y and all that sort of crack. Like, you know what I mean? So it's all uh, about yeah. times as well. So they want to get as many laps done and get the time up before they, you know, as much as possible before they have to um, change their tires, I suppose. Absolutely. What What was also very interesting, actually, I was watching the DRS on the Mercedes because Lewis Hamilton got up to signs. Um, that's where he was. And with DRS, he still wasn't able to pass the Ferrari. So it's, it's a good car. It's definitely a good yeah. car. That for, it needs a bit of a, it just needs a bit of an extra kick, mm. shall we say, um, just to get it up that little bit further. Actually, turn 15, that was it. That's where the concrete barrier was that everybody was glancing off the whole time. I, I'm surprised more people didn't come a cropper. Yeah, <laughs> to be there honest. you go. I am surprised a lot more people didn't come a cropper. But, yeah, it was pretty pretty much what it was the race after that. Was it the I race had... that was it the did it go how you maybe thought it would go or more or less how uh, yeah. you thought it would go or what was there much uh, kind of oh well I didn't think this would happen or I didn't think that would happen. Well the safety car did up endings a bit, I suppose. Um but no, we had two two Red Bulls first and second. Probably Perez yeah, well, we kind of expected Max to finish ahead of him, but, you know, Sergio did a great check. did an absolutely stellar job. And uh, towards the end, Max was complaining about, what? Well, uh, I've made a note somewhere. Um, uh, 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 yeah, I'll come back to it when I, <laughs> when I find it. Uh, it's a, oh, there it is. Uh, there was a slight issue between the on the balance between the diff and the engine braking. You can sort that one out. I haven't a clue what he's talking about. <laughs> there you go. So all you, all you engineers out there and... Uh... Mechanics and physicists, I suppose you can figure you can figure all that out there. And uh, absolutely, you know, it's kind of yeah. I I have to admit I couldn't get that one. So I suppose maybe the fact that the the roles were reversed in in Red Bull was nice because of course Sergio Perez wants to attack for the world championship. It was nice to see Char- Charles Leclerc in third. I would have put him fourth and Alonso third, and Alonso was all over the back of him. But that Ferrari seems to be quick in a straight line. Even with DRS, the only one could pass him was a Red Bull. And, you know, yeah. DRS gave an extra bit of kick, you know, so I was kind of surprised. But, um, yeah, it, it, it kind of went as expected. The safety car did sort of change things a wee bit. Yeah. I wouldn't say anything startling, if you get me. I wouldn't say anything startling or shocking or... Or, or anything like that, you know. It was kind of, yeah, yeah, it was grand and all that. But, you know... Yeah, it ended up more or less as we thought it was going to. It was still an entertaining race. Don't get me wrong. It still was an entertaining race. So um, I hope a lot of people did watch it. I hope you all enjoyed it. And let's hope that Miami this weekend is going to be every bit as good. Yeah, that's it. And that brings us on to the the Miami Grand Prix, which is uh, this weekend. And uh, just looking at the track here, very straight track. There's one straight. It's nearly like a drag race straight. And then it's kind of, yeah, there's some weird, I suppose, one or two danger spins in it there, isn't there? Yeah. That's I'll be sector- putting it up on the video here afterwards so people will, yeah, will take a look at it. That sector three is one hell of a straight, um, I have to admit, um, yeah. between uh, 16 and 17. I, yeah. I, I'm kind of curious that DRS zone is, is detection is right at the start of the straight. And then DRS doesn't really kick in till about 40% of the way on the straight. It'd be nice to see a big long one for the crack, you know? And yeah. of course, there's that Sector 2 one between uh, 9 and 11. <laughs> that's, that's straight to a Formula 1 car. <laughs> it really is straight to a Formula 1 car. Well, we, we had its first Grand Prix last year because we know we're having three American Grand Prix this year. The Americans have really gone to town on this, on Formula 1 at the minute. So, I mean, last year uh, is the lap record. Technically, because it was the only race they ever did. A 131.3 from Max Verstappen. You can pretty much expect that to be about to say a ballpark this time. Maybe it might be beaten. I'm not quite sure. But uh, you can expect that to be yeah, around the same, roughly, I have to admit, with those 57 laps. Last year was interesting, though, I have to admit. Because, of course, pole position was Charles Leclerc again. 
he's had a good, you know, he did really well. Now, he did end up finishing second. But he was only, you know, three seconds behind Max Verstappen when he finished. Yeah. So he did a good job last year. I'm sure he's going to be trying now for that again this year. He will probably, of course, as we know, he'd want to win it. But, you know, last year compared to this year, last year it was Red Bull and two Ferraris right behind them. I can't see that happening this year. I think it's going to be two Red Bulls and a Ferrari and an Aston Martin behind them somewhere around there. Because, of course, you know, I suppose Aston Martin have done so well lately since Fernando Alonso has got in there and since they've got a bit of uh, experience behind them. You know, yeah. from the previous year with um I'm after forgetting his name now, Sebastian Vettel. Um, you know, it is after making sort of the team really, really good. I would dare say in the next couple of years you might even see Aston Martin. You'd, you'd miss you'd miss Sebastian on the on the track, wouldn't you? Nearly, you know, his you presence he, he brought something to to the to a race, didn't he? I actually think you're going to laugh at this. I think Fernando is Sebastian version two at the minute because the Fernando Alonso we know was very kind of energetic and animated and, you know, he wasn't yeah. afraid to shout at people and he wasn't afraid to do this. He was still a likable guy, but he's kind of relaxed and smiley now, which is very Max Verstappen. Does it make <laughs> you feel know? uneasy, Michael, or something when it's the same way? Like I, 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 I begin to think I begin to think they're putting something in the water at Aston Martin or something. I'm not quite oh. sure. <laughs> Or some, or something in the fuel tank. Well, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> we won't say that. No, we won't. Comment. I, I, I'd, say, I'd say it's, I'd say it's more in the water for the drivers. Yeah, really. that's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, it wouldn't be safe for them to drink fuel now. No, no, that wouldn't. Well, no, 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 no. Although you never know what some of them might have to. Be. <laughs> 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 you never know what some of them. But it is an interesting little track, and I, I, I mean, you know, it, it was purpose built and modified and things like that for. Formula One. So it is going to be an interesting little race. I absolutely love the track. I think it's it's just really unusual. It is a fast track. But then again, you know, as we know from Americans in the well, Indian there's some, There are some bends there that you would think would, would slow the drivers down to a certain extent. There are. I mean, I suppose the, the, the worst situation really is kind of 11 to 16. Yeah. The rest of them, you know, okay, turn 17 is 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 pretty much what is it? It's about it's about 120 degrees, maybe. You know, it, it's quite tight, but the cars don't make much of that because then, of course, you know, the next two races, ones after it, first ones a little looser, next ones looser again. Sure, they're accelerating. They're 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 barely doing anything but flat out at that stage. You know, I I did think that turn four, five, and six were very reminiscent um, of Suzuka. The way it goes kind of that way and that way and that way. You know, Suzuka is very much like that. Um, very reminiscent when you're watching the cars driving around it, I have to admit. You know, if you were, if you didn't know which race it was, you came in and went, there's a race this weekend. Oh, Suzuka. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. could yeah. easily happen, you know. But I mean, you know, between turn eight and 11, it, it may as well be, it's not straight, but it may as well be straight. You know, then you have those little tight sections. So that that's quite good. And then, of course, you have the main straight of Sector 3. And I mean, that, that's, that thing goes on forever. <laughs> you know what I mean? It that thing to... goes on absolutely forever. You know, so it is a fast track. It's going to suit a fast car. So it's going to suit Aston Martin, Ferrari, and Red Yeah, that's Bowl. what I was just going to say. Yeah. And which yeah, are the that... drivers for, from, those, from those three? Yeah, you're going to see, well, both Red Bull drivers, Leclerc and, and Alonso. It, it's kind of predictable, really. You know, they are the best drivers really out there at the minute, I suppose, to a certain I mean, extent. I think other surprises are anywhere along the line in this, I, I suppose, I, either in qualifying or in the race itself. I, I would have said George Russell, and I've been saying George Russell because last year there was a lot of surprises and a lot of uh, fun from George Russell. This year, he seems to be just getting bad luck. I don't know what it is about it. Does, if there's anything going to go wrong, or, or his teammate is going to play silly buggers, or the team is going to make a mistake, it's with George Russell, he's having a very unlucky time of it. Because I, you know, I, I'm not trying to be controversial and I'm not trying to put anyone down, but I, I do think he's the future of Mercedes. And right now, I do think he is the fastest driver. Um, I mean, yeah. I'm not putting Lewis down, but, you know, Lewis is getting but I mean, like the... Mercedes, you know, and even though Lewis is a class, you know, he, he is proven oh, he on is. the track and all that. But yeah, like. still at the same time, as a company or as a team, as a Formula One team, it, it's kind of like any soccer team or any hurling team or any Gaelic team or any team like that, sports team. You have to, 
you know, it's great to have that the experience, but you also have to look, you also have to think of the future and maybe this guy is <laughs> the future and still having still having um still having Lewis. Yeah, actually, there was a guy in the circuit of uh, circuit of Ireland there recently that tend to go past our front door every three years, yeah. and uh, I was chatting to him there down at the at the start because the start was just below us, and uh, he actually put it well to me. You know, he was saying, "Do you know I'm still pretty quick in the dry?" He said, "But I think it's going to rain this year," and he said, "You know, I, I'm after hitting my forties, and I notice I'm a little bit cagier in yeah. the rain." You know what I mean? And, and that's what happens. And it's going to happen to Lewis. Uh, Fernando Alonso is a bit of an aberration, I think. I, 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 that guy seems to be getting faster. I don't know how that is. Um, but, you know, it is going to happen and it's going to happen to Fernando. Too, that's, you know? I think therein lies, lies the thing too, like on a track, you know, for a Grand Prix, if it is raining, the, I suppose the drivers would be dreading it because it, it, it does make it very hard to get grip on the track then, doesn't it? It does because... You know, they say, you know, a Formula One car could drive upside down the tunnel when it's gone at high speed. Yeah. It actually worked with the serious amount of downforce on it. But, you know, that sounds great. That sounds, oh, I have a car that's stuck to the road. But that's not how it works. It has to be driving fast. It's designed to stick to the road when it is churning at 200 kilometers per hour upwards. And that's the problem with the rain. You, you, you're trying to get the downforce on the car, but you're not trying to drive too quickly that you're going to slip off the road. You know, so it is very interesting. Now, this weekend, there's a 60% chance of rain on race day. Now, we will have to see what happens with that. It's, I'm just looking at the weather forecast here. It says a 20% chance of rain on Friday, a 40% chance of rain on Saturday, and a 60% chance of rain on Sunday. There you go. Uh, that's an unusual one, and I would have said rain in Miami would be rare enough, but um, it would be interesting considering sort of, you know, it, it's only the second year this has been run, uh, and last year was a dry race. So it would be interesting yeah. to see what would happen in a wet race. I mean, those straights are great and all that, but... Uh, you know, <laughs> I'd say when you're breaking down into one or two of the corners from a long straight like that, could get very interesting. Could sort, could trip up a couple of people along the way. If you're a betting person, I must admit I'm not. But they always run the article on um, oh, of, uh, of course or not. Yeah. No, no, no. no. I always run. I I always know who's going to win, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I don't tell everybody everything. Oh, it's uh, fixed. But, or, you know, as to be expected. The top four drive, the top five drivers from one to five, uh, Max, Sergio, Charles, Fernando, and Lewis, which pretty much will probably describe the top five, um, unless somebody has a fall off the track or something goes wrong. <laughs> That's it. And moving on to uh, moving on to news for this week. News, news, news. Let's blast through the news very, 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 very quickly. There has been a rumour, and I don't know where this rumour has come from because it's thrown me off to one side, that Charles Leclerc has been talking to Mercedes. Now, Toto Wolff has come out very quick and said they are 100% committed to putting pen to paper with Lewis Hamilton in response to these rumours. Now, I don't know where these rumours are coming from because Charles Leclerc is kind of standing there going, what? And why would you go from the number two team down to the number four team? Why would you sign? You know, he's in his prime. Why would he sign himself backwards when he but knows see, if anyone... Sometimes, though, you know, what's said in front of the camera is different to what, is different to what goes on behind the scenes. Oh, well, that's always the case. You know, yourself, yeah. it all happens. I see, I see, and, and everybody get on and all that sort of crack, you know. So, I mean, yeah, it does tend to get a bit like that. Sebastian Vettel, actually, is to drive Mansell's Williams and Senna's McLaren at the Goodwood uh, Festival of Speed. So when Ross FM sent the two of us over to Goodwood to see that, we, 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 we'll have a talk to Vettel while we're there, right? There you are. We might as well, like, you know, have a, have a drink with him, you know. Ah, yeah. Well, he's a nice guy when you get him out, you know, especially yeah. if he's not. You know, he's, yeah. he's, he's he's very shy on the old pain. Sometimes we're, we're not yeah. going to be going anywhere any to, to your any do, any your dodgy joints now, or Anthony. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> not that place we went to last time. No, oh, and, yeah, no, 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 no. Like um, I said, what goes on on tour stays on tour. What goes on on tour stays on tour. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of person people asking questions at the minute. Is this a new Ferrari resurgence after Leclerc in the last race? We're hoping so. Uh, will they catch Red Bull? Well, if they keep it up, no. But they might next year, you yeah. know. So I, I, I'd say that seems to be, you know, 
that seems to be what the issue is. That, that seems to be the question with Ferrari at the minute. Can they keep the ball rolling? We'll yeah. have to see. They're not going to win this year. But, you know, second in the constructors again. Yeah, unfortunately, you're going to have Aston Martin on their tail for that one. So let's hope they don't make uh, too much more mistakes. <laughs> too many more Fingers mistakes. crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> they are the most successful Formula One team of all time. You can't argue so, with that. I mean, I mean, no, when, you, when you look at the history, it's it speaks for itself. So, oh, uh, something I would like to say because everyone forgets this, and I mean, I, I, you know, oh, who's the most for the, the you know Ferrari are the most successful Formula One team of all time? Who's the second the most successful Formula One team of all time? Nobody seems to answer that. It's Williams. They're they're a great team. They did very well, actually, in the last race, I have to admit. Lando Norris did a great job. Uh, pat on the back for that fella. I don't know what they're paying him. You want to pay him a bit more. <laughs> it, yeah. I'm not sure to agree with that. What do you think? <laughs> well, you, know, you never know. There's plenty of money floating around, you know. Yeah, well, he has said, I, I see here a little article that says, uh, Norris says the McLaren updates are a step forwards. Um, he's hardly going to say they're a step backwards. Um, a, a, a lot of things you read and you see... It would, not be, it would not be good PR, no, so it wouldn't. No, to say we're taking a step backwards <laughs> would be... Uh, uh, yeah, no. it would be really, you know. And, and Valtteri Bottas has actually said... Uh, the Azerbaijan Grand Prix was a a, a a weekend to forget. No surprise, but he says he's motivated towards Miami. Track record at the minute would say don't be overly motivated. Yeah. We see how he goes. I do wish him the best because, you know, Alfa Romeo, Fiat, Ferrari, they were all the same bunch. You know what I mean? At one stage, they were all the same bunch. It's nice to see him doing well. And Alfa Romeo have an awful lot more racing accolades than they'll ever get credit for in real life it will be nice to see them going out in a bit more of a high you know yeah, but yeah. they can only do what they can do is to say you know yourself you can only Miss do what 15. you can do <laughs> yeah exactly yeah, yeah. Uh, you know so I mean Pierre Gasly as well says he's very keen to move on from a very bad weekend uh, with Alpine um, as they failed to score in Baku it's beginning to look more like Fernando Alonso knew something isn't it because mm. you know Last year, he was doing sensationally well in the Alpine Rocket, as they called it. And he did very, very well, you know. And now he's gone, Aston Martin were doing middle field. Now he's gone to Aston Martin. They're doing very, very well. Uh, and Alpine have kind of fallen off a cliff somewhat. Um, yeah, maybe there's something he's not telling us. <laughs> you never <laughs> maybe know. He, maybe he's a good luck charm. <laughs> never know. A bit like you on Ross FM. Absolutely, you know, maybe Fernando Alonso is a French four leaf clover or a shamrock or something like that. Who knows? Um, he, he seems to be doing very well. I, I, I don't think anyone's going to complain. You know yourself. I, I, I think everyone, you know, happy enough is to say, you know, you know, that's the way it is. I suppose that's the way Formula One is. You know, um, Hamilton actually came across and said. Uh, that the safety car in Azerbaijan was a bit of a kick in the teeth, and um, and Russell kind of is claiming that he's going to come on stronger for the Miami Grand Prix. Now, if anybody watched the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, they'll understand them comments to a certain amount. Uh, sometimes I I do think Formula One drivers do kind of make excuses, um, like Russell. He, he he the restart was abysmal for him. He should have been doing an awful lot better than he was, you know. And Lewis, yeah, the team should have spotted that that safety car was coming. It it was blatantly obvious that that you know the wires had gone off and there is going to be a safety car, you know. So it, it's kind of an unusual situation. But look, they're all saying they're coming back, coming back stronger in Miami. We'll have to wait and see. That's it. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it makes for it makes for a very interesting. Uh, Grand Prix in Miami, the bad the bad boys Grand Prix. You know, maybe maybe if they got uh, Will Smith and uh, Martin Lawrence, you know, to 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 join the Formula One there, that'd be an he could show the boys around. Uh, they could they could get the old uh, they could get the old Irish bad boys, you know, the Rossi and the Wexfordian, you know. <laughs> well, this, this is, no, that'll be that that be that be something else, you know. Maybe it's something we could look into, look into for the future, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of them go stateside, huh? But uh, <laughs> okay, let, that's great. Listen, thanks very much, Michael. And just to let everyone know about the Ross of M 50 50 draw, yes, it's gone mm -hmm. online, so uh, you can now pick go onto the website and click on the 50 50 draw icon, and you can uh, 
You can enter it online or you can do it the normal way and buy an envelope. It's uh, two euro for one envelope or three for a fiver. So why not? Why not uh, do that? The uh, the closing day, the closing date. It's um the next draw is actually today at one o'clock. So get you, get on the uh, on the website or uh, get your uh, get your envelopes in as soon as possible, and you you could be in with a chance to win. So. Uh, yeah. There you go. Now even you you have a chance to enter in as well if you if you want to. You can just go on the Ross of M website as well. So I, I, I I'm sure Paul Egan is shout fix. That's it. And uh, actually, our last winner uh, two weeks ago was was uh, she entered it on the. It was her first time entering it, and she did it on online, and she won it. So uh, fair play to her. So there you go. So there's two two ways that you can enter, which is. Which is very good. So, listen. Thanks very much for taking the time out to do uh, the last word in Formula One, and we look for we look forward to looking back at the Miami Grand Prix next week. A pleasure as always, Aiden. Talk to you then. No problem. Thanks very much. And that was Michael O'Grady, our Formula One expert.